Hello. So, what I want to do is show you how to graph y equals negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 3. And we're just going to use a table for right now. But to use a table, it's very important because all graphs we can use by setting a table of values. But it's very important when using a parabola, when graphing a quadratic, or what we call the shape of the graph of parabola, is we need to make sure we choose our points 2 to the left and 2 to the right of our um, axis of symmetry. But what I'm going to do from now, because I've shown a lot of examples of choosing points to the left and to the right, and what we notice is the point, the y coordinate to the left and to the right are exactly the same. So what I'm going to do now is let's just choose two points either to the left or to the right, and then we'll use the axis of symmetry to reflect over the axis of symmetry to find our exact same coordinates. All right, so the first thing we need to do is though find our axis of symmetry. So our definition of the axis of symmetry is x, which is a vertical line, x equals opposite of b divided by 2a, which is going to represent a vertical line. Well, in this case, we need to figure out what b and a are. So remember, a is our coefficient of our quadratic term, b is our coefficient of our linear term, and c is going to be our constant. Now, we're not going to use c for the, con um, for the axis symmetry, but it's kind of good just to know. So therefore, we have opposite of negative 8 divided by 2 times negative 2. Notice it's opposite of b. Since b is negative, it's opposite of negative, which is now going to make this a positive 8 over negative 4. So therefore, my axis symmetry is x equals negative 2. So now on my graph, I'm going to go over and I'm going to plot my axis of symmetry, which is at negative 2, which is going to be a nice little vertical line. So we can say that x equals negative 2 is right there. All right, so now we need to choose our table of values. Now, in before, what I've done is I have always chosen two points to the left and to the right. And the reason why I did that is because we wanted to make sure, and also for you guys to see, that our points to the left and to the right, the y coordinates, are exactly the same. And that's so important because now we don't have to always do all that legwork, especially when we have a problem like this where we're going to have a lot of math involved. It's a lot of work to keep on adding all those values. So if I say my axis of symmetry is at negative 2, then all I'm simply going to do is let's just pick two points to the left. Or you could pick two points to the right. But a lot of times I like to maybe keep it, you know, I like where zeros and 1. Those are good numbers to use. So now let's evaluate for y equals negative 2 times 0 squared minus 8 times 0 minus 3. Well, 0 squared is 0 times negative 2 is 0 minus 8 times 0, which is 0, negative 3. And then let's do 1 y equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1 minus 3. So therefore, this becomes negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, so that's negative 2 plus 8 minus 3. So that becomes negative 5 plus 8, which is now a um, positive 3. And then let's do negative 2. y equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared. What am I doing? Negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 minus 3. Oh, and let's go and pick my two points to the right. So if that's at negative 2, then we'll have negative 3 and negative 4. All right, I'm not going to evaluate for these. Though. I'll show you why in a second. So therefore, this becomes negative 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 8 is going to be a positive 16 minus 3. So therefore, that's going to give me now a, that's positive 5. So that's going to now give me a positive 5. All right. So let's go and plot these points and see what it looks like. So at 0, I have negative 3. 1, 2, 3. At negative 1, I'm up at 3. 1, 2, 3. And then at negative 2, I'm up to 5. 1, 3, 4, 5. All right. So right now, I have a graph that looks something like this. Right Now remember, the axis of symmetry reflects our parabola. So therefore, I know if this point is 1 away from the axis of symmetry. So if I go to my next point, which would be at negative 3, I know that point is also going to be 3. Then if I go over 2 points, and over at 2 points, I was down at negative 3. So at 2 points over here, I'm also going to be down at negative 3. And so now what you can see is by using the axis of symmetry, I plotted points to the, to the left, actually, or I plotted points actually to the right, and I reflected them over my axis symmetry. So now you can see I'm able to create my graph, which we call parabola. Now lastly, let's go and take a look at my vertex. Now remember the vertex, since this graph, notice our a is negative. My graph opens down. That means my graph now has a maximum value. There is no minimum because the graph keeps on going downward. But this minimum value is at 
negative 2 comma 5. Notice the axis of symmetry. The x value of the axis of symmetry is the same as the x value of my vertex. Pretty cool. Let's go and take a look at when the graph crosses the y axis, which we call the y intercept. So that the y intercept is when x equals 0. So at x equals 0, we have negative 3. So therefore, it's going to be 0 comma negative 3. And then the x intercept. Now, we're going to learn how to find the x intercepts to an exact value. But for right now, let's just kind of estimate this, and we'll learn how to find them exactly. So you can see my x intercept is going to be between negative 4 and negative 3. So I could just write negative 4 is less than x, which is less than negative 3. And I also have a negative, I also have another intercept that's making negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 0. Now, usually, we're just going to use this for right now, just so you can say, all right, that's the estimate of where they are at. All right, I'm not going to get into estimating or how to find them, because in my next couple of videos, I'll show you how to find the exact value of your intercepts. But for right now, just as long as we can find the axis of symmetry, our vertex, and our y-intercepts, we're all set. Thanks.